The time has finally come to build my new gaming PC. Alright, so hello everyone, Fudgy here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you my new gaming PC, going through all the specs and also me building it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know some of you guys requested this video, so uh, yeah, here it is. I <laughs> hope you guys enjoy. So this is my second PC build. My now old PC, I will show all the specs on the screen right now for you and you can compare the upgrades. So to start off, we have the Intel Core i7-8700K 3.7 gigahertz six core processor and then to cool that bad boy we've got the nzxt kraken x62 this is my first time installing a liquid cooler so i was kind of nervous about it but it actually turned out all right the motherboard is an asus rog strix z370 e gaming atx lga 1151 motherboard wow there's so much to say on these these parts for the ram we have the g skill trident z rgb i've got 32 gigabytes probably not needed but yeah there you go they're all <laughs> also rgb i know how some people might feel about that so they are ddr4 3200 memory as for the storage we've got the samsung 960 evo one terabyte so most of my games will actually be going onto this hard drive it is really fast i've also got windows installed onto it and my goodness it is insane so i'm really glad i got that now for the video card i got the evga geforce gtx 1080 ti 11 gigabyte black edition and yep well this thing was expensive especially at the minute i think this is probably a really bad time to actually build your own computer because prices at the minute are pretty high because of cryptocurrencies and stuff like that so yeah it kind of sucks for the case, I've got a Corsair 750D Airflow Edition ATX. It is a full tower case. The power supply, I went for an EVGA Supernova G3 750W 80 plus gold certified fully modular ATX power supply. I also threw in there a two terabyte hard drive just to get like the bulk of my videos and stuff onto them. So yeah, there are all the parts. Now it's time to get onto the fun part and that is building the computer. And if there's one thing I know about building computers, it's that you've got to be very, very careful. <laughs> Okay, my bad. I started off by getting the motherboard out of the box. Just, uh, you know, checking it all out and stuff. Um, also, if you see me do anything wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you think I can improve on in the comments as well. I'd love to know your thoughts on this build. So yeah, once I had the motherboard all set up, I got my Karambit Crimson Web Knife and decided to get the CPU out ready. I lifted up the lever and then located the arrow on the CPU. That small arrow indicates which way the CPU goes into the motherboard. Once the CPU has gently been placed into the motherboard, you then pull down that lever. It can be quite tough, but you just got to put a bit of pressure on it and uh, the, the bit of plastic on top should just fall off by itself. Then once the latch is secured, just uh, put the plastic to one side or, uh, or throw it if you're you're like me moving on to the ram now the ram is pretty easy to install you literally just locate where the slots are put them in until you hear it click and that's it really like i said before they are rgb which means they'll light up this is my first build using a case with a window on it so i was quite happy to get rgb lighting on my ram it's now time to install the m.2 ssd this is my first time doing this so i was a little bit worried but it turned out okay i also forgot something pretty important and uh well that's a screwdriver so uh yeah there i go into uh my shed to get a screwdriver i'm, I'm not sure how i forgot about that anyway now that i have the screwdriver i had to take off the little plate on the motherboard just unscrew the three screws you then have to install a small screw uh by the ssd i forgot to do this um, i do it after i install the ssd but once the ssd is in just screw it down into place also take off the little bit of tape on the back of that uh, metal plate um, i forget the name of it now anyway once you've taken that part off put the metal plate back down and screw it all in and you're good to go i then unscrewed the case and put the screws into a little pot so i wouldn't lose them next step was to put the io shield in now this can be a little bit tricky but you gotta be a bit forceful and just push around the edges and it should just snap into place and there we go big thumbs up from me great making sure all the standoffs are installed i then carefully placed down the motherboard and make sure it lined up with the io shield and then once it's in place just screw it down whenever screwing things in i often do it in a cross pattern this way it just keeps it even so uh, keep that in mind now onto the liquid cooler i was quite nervous about this part but it actually turned out really well i installed the fans to the radiator and then threw it on top of the case fortunately the thermal paste is already applied onto the cpu cooler so you don't have to worry about that i installed the back plate on the motherboard and then gently placed it down onto the cpu and screwed it all in once again using the cross pattern for this i then made sure it was nice and snug by giving it a bit of a tug just be careful when doing this, but you want to make sure it is down firmly. Now it's time to install the brick that is the power supply. This was pretty straightforward to do, just screw it in. 
and you're pretty much done. Well, until you have to do the cables, but we'll come to that later on. Here you can see me showing off the GPU, the graphics card, the thing that cost the most money in this build. No, I'm being serious. It, it genuinely cost me too much money. There I am peeling off the protective cover, whatever it's called. I know you guys might enjoy that. So there you go. Probably should have done it once it's installed. However, I just took it off there. Anyway, I then unscrewed the brackets, took them out, and placed the GPU into its slot. Like a lot of things when building a computer, this is pretty straightforward to do. Once it's in place, just make sure you screw it back in. Now the scary part. Will it turn on? Anyway, it was now time to press the button and turn it on, make sure it's all running okay. And to my surprise, everything seems to be working. However, one camera shot made me realize that one of the fans was not actually plugged in. Um... My bad. That's that's a big thumbs down from me, as you can see. So I turned the camera off, installed the fan. Just a little mistake. I'm glad I spotted it. That's why I made sure I turned it on, make sure everything was running first. So now everything was plugged in and working. All the fans were on. I got some really nice camera shots of the computer. And I know I said it before, but I'm so happy with this build. It just looks so good. And as you can see, I'm giving a big thumbs up to say that the fan is working. I don't know why, but throughout this whole video, I've just been giving thumbs up and just loads of hand gestures. I don't know what's going on, all right? Now that I know the fans are running, and everything seems to be okay. It was time to clean up the cables and do some cable management. I was worried I was going to do a really bad job with the cables, but I think I actually did okay. The computer is now in my room, and all I have to do is peel off the protective cover on the metal. Oh, wow, what is that? There's one inside. Oh, dear. Okay, well, I messed up. Anyway, I took the side panel off and then just took the protective cover off that side as well. My mistake again. It happens, all right? Oh, it looks so good. Look at that. Wow, this computer is a beast. Oh, my goodness. Man, these camera shots make the computer look amazing. I installed Windows 10 using a USB flash drive, and I was pretty much good to go from there. Something that I love about the RGB lighting on this computer is that you can sync it to your music. So, check this out. So yeah, there's lots of options to play around with with the RGB lighting. So you can get some really cool lighting effects if you like. Now time to move on to the performance of the computer. I've had this computer now for about two weeks and this thing is absolutely insane. And it should be because I spent, like I said before, way too much money. Anyway, here I am playing Player Unknown Battlegrounds. I was on the highest settings and getting over 100 frames per second. However, it did drop occasionally when I was in cities and stuff like that. But for the most part, it stayed well over 100 frames per second. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the performance can drop a little bit since I am recording. Also, when gaming, it does seem to keep cool as well. I get around 60 degrees on my GPU when gaming. The CPU often doesn't go over 50 when gaming as well, which is great. The only time I have issues with it overheating is when I'm rendering videos, specifically in MP4 format. And pretty much every single time i render a video it gets to about 90 degrees which is pretty crazy but on average it usually sits around 83 degrees so it's pretty hot i might need to try and fix that it could be just a case of playing around with the settings and maybe speeding up the fans a little bit as i'm pretty sure it's in silent mode at the moment talking about the negatives as well my only other issue with this computer is the noise now it's nothing crazy you won't be able to hear it when I'm talking in the microphone right now, but it is noticeably louder than my last computer. That's mostly because my last case had soundproofing and stuff like that. So it's really not that big of a problem and it can be fixed quite easily. All I really need to do is get some soundproofing, but for now I'm actually fine. It's not really that much of a problem. So now that I have this awesome PC, I can also play a lot of VR on it and I'm absolutely loving virtual reality. It was actually one of the reasons I bought this rig was so I can play virtual reality and it is amazing. So I've actually started uploading content of vr and i plan on uploading quite a lot more as you can see here i am playing tiny town vr this is probably my favorite game to play uh, with virtual reality at the moment it's just a lot of fun it's basically just where you make your own worlds and like towns and everything it's, it's pretty cool now something i should mention about this computer is you really do not need to spend this much on a computer at all and the main reason i actually got this is because i upload pretty much daily or at least i try to sometimes even twice a day i'm rendering a lot of videos recording quite a lot and I just really, really wanted to upgrade my computer. And that's exactly what I've done. And I am super happy with it. So yeah, that being said, don't go and buy a crazy computer like this. You don't have to do that at all. There are plenty of builds out there that you can get for a good price and get really good performance out of them. I know I'm constantly comparing this build to my last computer, but 
the difference is pretty insane. So my last computer to render a 20 minute video would take roughly an hour long. But now on this computer to render a video that is 20 minutes long, it only took me 17 minutes, which is absolutely amazing, especially as I push for daily content. It gives me more time to actually do other stuff instead of waiting for the video to render. That was also a huge reason for me to upgrade my computer. I was tired of waiting around for the video to render. It, it was just a pain. I think you guys can tell that I am very happy with this PC build. Also, I want to thank Max or Maximizing. He actually made a video on this exact build. Well, actually, I changed some of the parts, but for the most part, it's pretty much the exact same build. I will leave a link for his channel in the description below. And if you want to check out his video version, feel free to do so. It is pretty awesome. Now that I have this PC, I should be uploading a lot more content hopefully in better quality as well. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember to hit that like button, comment and subscribe if you want to see more. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. I'll leave a link for both in the description below. And if you want to check out this PC for yourself or buy it for yourself, the link for that will be in the description below. But like I said earlier, you don't need this kind of computer to do gaming or anything like that. So keep that in mind. So yeah, really hope everyone enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.